system will enter, or if it is the did phase, I call my did enter. And sim uh, similarly, I do the same thing for will exit and did exit. And as I mentioned on the last show, I do this because uh, I believe, if I recall correctly, uh, Storyboard used to have the will and did concept built right into the method names, and so I wanted to maintain the same signature for people who are converting over from Storyboard to Composer. Also, it makes a lot more sense to me to split it out in advance, and then you don't have to think about it. You're thinking, you're, you're, I'm in the will segment. I never have to think about code being mixed in from the, the did segment or phase. So upon entering, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start physics because every example stops it when it exits. And we will set gravity to zero because we don't want George to fall initially. We want him to be in the standard pose position, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. At the top of this uh, section here, we have our filter. We talked about this last week, but uh, one of the cheater ways to create a bunch of physics bodies that do not collide with each other. So in other words, they, they collide, but there's no physics response. This rectangle here hits this rectangle, and it doesn't bounce off of it or get pushed away. The cheater's way to do that is to create a single filter with a group index of minus 1, and then use that filter for all bodies that you don't want to collide with each other. Now, that breaks down as soon as you want to start uh, adding additional collision rules. But for this example, I don't want anything basically to collide with anything else except for the ground here. So all of the physics parts use that filter, and then the ground has no filter, and so these will collide with the ground. Ugh. <laughs> Poor George, just getting beat today, I tell you. <sighs> okay, next, I put in some flags, local variables, where you can turn off a body part, and if I... If I kept my logic right here, you should be able to do any particular one simply by selecting where it says true instead of false. And then what that will do is turn off, in this case, the right leg. But uh, it will also turn off anything that depends upon the right leg being there. For example, the dragging code. All the body parts need to be present for the dragging code to work the way I wrote it. So that will turn off, that should turn off the dragging code. Let's go ahead and run it again. And there's no right leg. And now the body is yellow, which was the default color. Anything that is green is draggable. So we can no longer drag our doll. But we got rid of the right leg. We can get rid of the head. And let's get rid of the uh, left arm. You get, a, Poor you get a weird looking false there. Yeah. Oh, false. Well, it's just because I can't type when I'm trying to do a demo. There it is. Okay, so I got rid of the left arm, and the right or the left leg code depended upon that because I use it to align it. Later on, I do a calculation. Basically, what it says is if the left arm moves, the left leg depends on that position. It also moves. Poor man's code. It's just the way I coded this up. So let's go ahead and turn everything back on. And let's go ahead and take a look at some more of the example. Okay. Another bit that I did here, really, this was, um, I did this in order to pre prepare for the posing example. Uh, there's an example here where if you run the posable doll, you can position your doll just the way you like it. Hit the save button, quit, go back into the posable doll, and click restore, and it will pose the doll in that position. The way I achieved that was by saving the position of the body parts, and there's two parts to that. First, I kept track of all the body parts, and then I iterated over the list when you click save, and I saved those positions into a JSON encoded file using code that we talked about two weeks ago for. Uh, loading, uh, saving and restoring tables to disk or persistent storage. And then similarly, when I press restore, it loads the file if it's found, iterates over the contents, and looks at the list of current body parts and assigns their X and Y positions as well as their rotations. 
So in our draggable doll, I knew I was going to do that. So I just put a body parts table, a table that currently has nothing in it. And then every time I created a body part, I simply added it to the table using a named field like torso or head. Let me make this a little bigger so you can read it. Which stores that as a text indexed field called torso in the table, which allows me to later iterate over it with the 4KV iteration or the pairs iterator. I can show that to you later if, if people want. So what I heard, what I just heard you say though, is that uh, if someone were wanting to make a a game where they had objects in a room that you could arrange, or dresses that you could dress characters in, or anything like that, you could do that and then save it, which maybe you have an auto save for the player, um, and then when they come back to their work, it's saved in the same position. So. Yes. This, this sampler basically provides a working example of something like that. Yeah, this provides, in the Posable example, another file called, uh, I think called Posable.lua, provides a base sample from which you could start to do some of those things if you wanted to. Now, it's not going to solve everything. For example, you said something about putting a dress on a character. Yeah. And if you had, say, two dress examples, then you'd have to ramp up your code a little bit to... Uh, look at the saved content and decide which dress to put on. And it's not quite as simple, but it's almost exactly the same. I mean, it still iterates, examines the data, and makes a decision based on the data. So that's our body parts table. Then I got a bunch of different parameters here that let us mess with the visible or the visual, uh, like the, the width, thickness of the arm, the length of the arm, uh, how far the head is from the body. So, for example, if you want to give it a long neck. And now we've got a very, <laughs> a very long neck. That's nice. George has got a long neck. Uh, let's see, what else can we do here? Joint radius. Joint radius has to do with the rounding on the rectangles. I talked about this last week. And uh, arm segment thickness. Anyways, I'm not going to mess with these. People can play with them. It's not 100% robust code. Uh, I think that as you mess with it, it's going to make things look a little bit visually goofy. But it's a starting point to understand what I've done here. All right, almost ready to talk about the doll. The only other thing was I knew that I was going to have gravity in this game. Game, not game. Uh, example. And I wanted to make sure that the body didn't just fall off the screen. Very zen pose for George there. And uh, he's doing a little yoga. <clears throat> um, anyways, so I put a block at the bottom of the screen. It's a, it has a static body, as you can see here, which means that under gravity it's not going to move. No forces can move it. It's going to stay in the same position all of the time unless I move it with my code. And it has no special filter. Uh, so it has the default, everything hits me, I hit everything body, which is, <clears throat> by default, if you do not define a filter, all objects will collide with and respond to collisions with all other objects. It's the, the starting point for collisions. And so let's take a look at the torso to start with. The torso and the head, let me reload this. Go back to normal. Oh, come on, George. Two seconds, please. So you're putting him back to the way he was? Yeah, I'm going to put him pretty much to the back to the way he was, except I'm taking his limbs off, since we're oh. just talking about the torso at this point. So this is the torso. The torso is nothing more than a rectangle with rounded corners. It's kind of boring, but it gives us uh, a nice way to say that we're going to have a shoulder joint and a hip joint, and the leg and whatever, will they'll rotate around here, and if I had left this square, it would be a little bit ugly looking in certain positions, so I rounded it off. This is nothing more than a rounded rectangle placed in the content layer, 
which is the display group that we created above. And then what I do is I say create it 62 pixels wide, 96 pixels tall, and then place it in the center of the screen as far as the X coordinate goes, and 24 pixels above the center of the Y axis. All right, so above the center of the screen, and um, I set a default color of yellow so that I know when it's green that it is in fact draggable. I wanted to give it some color, and white was a little bit boring. Uh, important, I set the density of the shape, and I could play with this. In fact, I suggest people do so as they're uh, manipulating the code so they can see how that modifies the doll and its behavior when they're dragging it around. Um, then I set damping, and so there's two kinds of damping. There's linear damping, which says that when it is moving in a straight line in any direction, it will start to slow down.